Former Top Gear presenter Richard Hammond has traded in driving fast cars to fix them up instead this weekend. Is he working at Quick Fix? What's he doing? What? <laughs> well, the presenter of Mechanics Workshop is dedicated to restoring old cars. Now he's taking his workshop to Car Fest. Richard Hammond joins us live from the festival. Good morning to you. I mean, this must be heaven for you. A whole festival talking about cars, yeah. doing up cars. <laughs> What's going to be happening? Yeah, it is indeed heaven for me. It's fun. Well, I mean, Car Fest itself, it's an enormous event. There's several festivals here, Spa Fest, there's music and all sorts, but the cars are at the heart of it. So I've brought the smallest car to my workshop, but not just the team who are there, hopefully working, yeah, talking, uh, but the actual <laughs> workshop. And with us, we've, we've brought... I wanted to bring something that would work at the event because it's very much about families and fun. So that's little Oliver. The little local cadet I drove across Botswana on Top Gear about 20 years ago that has become quite a famous little car. People love him. And not long ago, I got a, a, a phone call from a guy called Jenico, an airline pilot, who said, I've got Olivia. What? He said, I've got a 1962 Opel cadet, also from Johannesburg, and here it is. He sold it to me. Um, she's a bit of a mess, like there's no engine, no interior, the paint's ruined. So over the next three days, on our workshop here at Carfest, we're going to restore this car completely and by Sunday afternoon drive Olivia and Oliver together around the track here. It's kind of romantic, isn't it? Because I'm soppy at heart. <laughs> it is lovely. Uh, Carfest is it, uh, yeah. Carfest is incredible. I've been there actually as a guest of Chris years ago. I mean, you're, you're up for a, a fantastic and pretty wild, I imagine, uh, a couple of days while you're up there. But how is Chris doing? We all uh, yeah. heard him announce uh, recently of his uh, skin cancer diagnosis. You've been friends for quite some time. How's he doing? He's good, he's fine. Saw him last night, along with a load of other people. Um, you know, it was found really early, that's the main thing. And, well, he's Chris, isn't he? He's still flat out and completely bonkers. He's also very excited, as is the whole team here, because the really great news is, I mean, this thing raises millions for children in need, loads of hospices, cancer charities, all sorts, a lot of children's charities. Like any charity event, it's got costs. So mm. some of your money ends up having to go towards the cost. And when it's this massive, they're significant. But the great news is, we all discovered last night, it's paid for itself already. It's completely... So from now on, if you were to come down with the family and do, cos it's a lot of fun, over the next three days, I think it's about 18 quid for a children's ticket. That includes the bands and about five different festivals in here. It's more than a day's entertainment. Every penny goes to the charities, because it's paid for itself. So literally 100% of your ticket goes to the charities. So they're all chuffed to bits about it. And Special the good thing, thing is, do. that feeling permeates everybody at the event. So even the, the people setting up the stands last night, we were here setting this up. The people serving the food, everybody knows that. So everybody feels brilliant. Each guest that walks in here today, all of their ticket money is going to end up going to the charities, which, mm. yeah, that feels good. What a great thing to do. Yeah, I know since it was launched back in 2012, it's raised over 25 million, which is just amazing. Um, talking, about amazing. The, talking about the money side of things, though, I know your Discovery Plus series, Richard Hammond's workshop, is coming back in October. Yes. Um, that does not make so much money, does it, Richard Hammond? I know you've had to, <laughs> you've had to part with some of your <laughs> beloved classic cars to fund yeah. this workshop, which it must be quite a wrench when you're thinking, yeah. which of your beloved cars do you need to move on in order to be able to fund bringing new ones in? Yeah, I'm not a natural-born businessman, as it <laughs> turns out. What I've had to do is sell my own collection of classic cars to buy all the equipment so that those guys can restore other people's classic cars. It's worked out a bit oddly like that. But it's... I love that it's about make, do and mend. It's very much of this time, isn't it? I mean, electric cars are coming, there's absolutely no doubt about it, but they're only part of the picture, thanks to synthetic fuels and other alternatives. Cars like this that were built 50, 60 years ago can be kept going. There's no carbon footprint in making Oliver or Olivia. And if they can be run on synthetic fuel, as they can be, and I'm going to be doing that here at the festival, then that also forms part of the yeah. future. Just, just, so just, it's ruinous to me, but I feel that we're part of what's going to be our future together. Yeah, just a quick one, actually. A lot of people talk about you, Les, at the moment. You know, it's in London and other cities as well. And mm -hmm. one of the ways you can be exempt from you is to get yourself a classic car. And some people are considering it. Would you recommend it, though? Because, of course, classic car, there'll be lots of other expenses, like doing it well, up and know what you're doing, finding the parts you? and know what you're doing. Is it a viable option, do you think, for people? 
I think classic cars will be part of the picture going forward because we cannot all be electric at the same time, we cannot all be synthetic fuel at the same time. There's a lot of, well, it's not the most efficient way of using renewable electricity, but each needs the other. So it will be a whole compendium. So for me, it's really exciting to think the roads aren't going to be full of just one type of vehicle. In some applications, an electric car is perfect. In others, an old restored car running on renewable synthetic fuel. In others, hydrogen combustion works. You don't see buses in, in petrol stations, do you? They fill up at the depot. Okay. They could fill with hydrogen. All right. So it's going to be a far more interesting picture. And these have a role to play, absolutely. Listen. Even ones like this. <laughs> oh, Oliver and Oliver. Listen, Richard, it's been great to see you. Have a fabulous weekend. It's going to be quite something, I imagine. Um, Shall do. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Charlotte, you should hold on to your 1974 well, Ford there Fiesta. We go. Yeah, if hold on to that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Just a bit of cooking <laughs> oil in. I think it takes a bit more than that. Don't follow my advice.